So far, I've llama trekked the winds in Wyoming, where we left the trees below us at 10,000 feet. We are now traveling five degrees north to Montana, and we'll be breaking free of the timber at approximately 6,800 feet as we hit the trail with a group guided by the Great Northern Llama Company. One of the great things about trekking in the hills above the Flathead Valley is the plethora of huckleberries. There are almost five species of huckleberries that grow up in this area, and uh, this would be the most recognizable. There's also a very small version called the grouseberry. She ain't got no, yes she does. I know she don't, yes she does. I'm satisfied with my gal. She don't wear us, I know she don't, yes she does. I'm satisfied with my gal. Well, it was another gorgeous day in the Swan Range, and it's time for a little gear in focus. The two things I'd like to touch on today are what plagued me when I camp. First, getting wet. Second, rolling off my mat. Big Agnes has overcome both of these problems through creative technology and using the right gear. First, I'd like to show you their tent. A tent that keeps you dry starts from the ground up with the ground mat. With a Big Agnes tent, the rain fly can be set up before the tent. Having the ground mat and the rain fly all set up before you set up the tent allows you to set up the tent in a dry environment. This ability to use the shelter with just the rain fly and the ground mat makes it useful as just a lightweight shelter or to be used as a uh, wind shelter when you're just picnicking. When picking out a tent, to keep everything dry, you want to pick one that has vestibules. A vestibule sticks out from the main part of the tent, giving you a place where you can stow gear and kind of dry yourself off before you go into the tent. Now that we've overcome difficulty number one of getting wet while camping, we'll move on to difficulty number two, sliding off your mat. Big Agnes has overcome this by designing their sleeping bags with a sleeve on the bottom into which your sleeping pad is inserted. Because the Big Agnes bag doesn't have all the fabric that a normal bag has on the bottom of it, you save a lot of weight when you're packing it down, plus it takes up less space. It is critical, however, to get the right sleeping mat for the bag. For cooler nights, you'll want a foam insulated mat. And on warmer nights, you can go with a mat like this one, which is an air insulated mat. Big Agnes also makes a chair, which utilizes the mat. You simply fold it in half, the mat goes in the chair, you inflate it, and you save a lot of weight and space. Double use of your gear. It's super cozy. Well, that's our gear in focus for today on filming the Rockies. You go back over it one more time when you're looking for a tent to stay dry. Get one with a rain fly that goes all the way to the ground. Vestibules to keep gear in and a ground mat to protect you from the moisture underneath. For a sleeping bag, which you won't slide off of the mat in, go with the Big Agnes bag with the sleeve inside for the mat. And now it's time for us to head north on Llamas at Latitude trekking and head to Alaska. Alaska, the last frontier. And judging by the airport population, I wasn't alone in choosing this corner of the world as a vacation destination. Alaska is a rugged, beautiful state, and we are awestruck almost instantly as we make our way around the Cook Inlet, en route to meet our guide Dan at the trailhead. Now these three guys will spit at each other. They won't spit at you. I mean, they won't spit at you. But don't get caught in the crossfire. So if a mountaineer lays his ears back, and he turns his head and he looks at Chanko like this. Duck. With the orientation complete, we head up the trail, joining the Seward High School cross-country team. 
who take a preseason trek each year since they are fortunate enough to have a coach who is also a llama outfitter. Our goal for this trip? To tread beyond the trail's end to a secluded alpine bowl. At only 3,200 feet above sea level, our close proximity to the North Pole makes this terrain as inhospitable as Wyoming was at 11,000 feet.